Welcome to the mindset and actions of a powerful alpha male leader. I am Skip LaCour. Welcome to this session, session four, the structured thoughts, actions, and lifestyle of a powerful alpha leader. Now in this session, I will outline the thought process of a powerful alpha leader. Now that thought process in broad, general, overall terms, how a powerful alpha leader views the world. And I will also describe how an alpha leader views the world in specific situations. I will talk about how that thought process leads to specific actions in certain situations. And then I will explain how those thoughts that an alpha leader has and how those actions that are caused by those thoughts lead to a certain lifestyle. Now, the purpose of this session is to get you to take action. Get you to take action in a manner that you may have not considered taking before. Instead of thinking and intellectualizing of what is the proper way to act or what will and will not work, my job is to sell you. My job is to sell you. It's to get you to take action. Now, when you feel and experience what it's like to be a leader, even if that takes me pushing you and making you do things that are counterintuitive against what you might think will and won't work, you will instinctively know how to be a leader in even more situations. But I need to push you and get you to do things that are counterintuitive and know what it's like to feel like, to experience what a leader experiences. Now, I just want to review what an alpha male is as far as our man formation this seminar, this course is concerned. An alpha male, an alpha male is man information's model term. It's the target, it's the objective, it's the goal that describes a strong and effective leader. So throw away whatever you've heard about an alpha male, all the different terms for this purpose. It's our target. It's nothing more than a strong leader. And Manformation teaches you how to lead your own life, lead other people, and how to integrate powerful alpha male qualities, characteristics, and actions into your own personality. So an alpha male is a leader. Now throughout this course, I've challenged you to reconsider, to change, or adjust your rules, beliefs, values, and standards. And how they affect the way you think and take action, or in many cases, why you don't take action. Until you reconsider, change, or adjust your rules, beliefs, values, and standards, nothing will change. Nothing in your life will change. You can have all this anxiety, all this angst, all this stress to take your life to a, another level, and you won't know how to do it because you're tied down to a certain way of thinking, all right? Stress in your life is caused from the difference in what you expect to happen in your life and what actually happens. There's a gap between what you expect and what actually happens. And the bigger the gap in between those two, the more stress you'll experience in your life. Now, there's two ways about eliminating stress in your life. And that's, you can lower your expectations, all right? Then you won't have that stress. If you don't expect much out of yourself, if you don't expect anything more out of life, then you won't feel stress. Or you can find a way, do whatever it takes to change the outcome, to change what actually happens so that it meets your expectations. And that's where the challenge of life comes in, isn't it? Now, Throughout this program, I've, in many different ways, on many different levels, I rattled you, I touched your hot buttons, I told you my personal stories. I did 
many different techniques on how to stimulate a different thought process. Because if I were to just come into the seminar and I would say, you know, an, a powerful alpha male leader does this and he does that and he doesn't ever take this and he will do this during these certain situations. And you know that number one, you either have to become more of a leader. You know yourself that you're not taking charge of your own life and you certainly aren't leading other people or you aren't taking charge of your own life or leading other people to the level that you want to get the things in life that you really want. So if I were to have come into this course just telling you what an alpha male does without a whole lot of explanation, without challenging the way you think right now, then you would say, no, I don't agree with that. Well, I can see his point. I agree with that. I don't agree with that. I agree with this, right? Of course, you don't agree with certain ways of thinking or certain ways of doing that an alpha male does. Or you'd be doing it right now. All right, you'd already be acting like a powerful alpha leader and you wouldn't need this course if you were doing all those things. So as I outline these specific thoughts, these specific actions that lead to a specific lifestyle, of course, your natural instinct of all 20 years you've been on this world or all 30 years or 40 years or 50 year, years you've been living this way, thinking this way, you're going, it's going to challenge that way of thinking, that way of doing. And that's what I want you to do. I was invited to a picnic on this beautiful Sunday with this family. This family is very intellectual very idealistic. They have high hopes for the world. Education is very important to this family. Serving other people, service to other people, making a difference in the world is part of their rules, values, beliefs, and standards. So that's where they're coming from. They've invited me uh, to this picnic. And at this picnic, on this beautiful Sunday, they all brought books and they picked out certain poems and it was kind of cool. It was, it was really neat. It was something that I never experienced before. And they went around and they all read poems. And it was a great uh, afternoon, really enjoyed a different experience for me. Well, at the end, we got into this deep conversation about politics, about the rich versus the poor. These are topics that they've thought about on many different levels, probably for many years. And the conversation got to rich people, what they do, what they don't do, their thought process. And I made it real clear that my opinion was the reason why people have all that money who control certain things is because that's what they focus on. That's what aligns with their values, their rules, their beliefs, their standards, their way of thinking. And so they focus on it. And I've talked about it throughout this course. The more you focus on certain things in your life, the more you'll manifest them in their life. And so when we talk about those people who have lots of money, that 5% of the population of the world that controls the money for the rest of the 95%, well, it's because they focus on it. They do whatever it takes. And I made the point that, you know, those type of people, the 5% who control the money for the rest of the 95% of the population, they're probably not enjoying this sunny Sunday afternoon reading poetry with their family. Now, there was one very idealistic of, of man of service, good, wholesome values, he said, well, you know, those people with all that money, I wouldn't want to live their life. They're miserable. They're unhappy just going for all that money. And it was very interesting that that view of other people, what they're feeling, what they believe, how they're living their life, it was an assumption, right? And I made the, the distinction that that's not necessarily true. People who focus on what it is they want 
they love what they do or they wouldn't do it. Now, there are people who have lots of money who are unhappy. Trust me, I, I understand that. There are also people who have lots of money who are very happy in the whole process. There are people with no money who are unhappy, and there are people with no money who are very happy. So it's all about you deciding what you want in your life and what you will do and what you won't do to go for it. And it's very clear when I talk about an alpha male leader and what he will do and what he won't do. It's very important if his rules, values, beliefs, standards don't agree with yours to say, oh, well, that's not the way to live life and I would never live my life that way and that guy's a jerk and that's not the way to go about life. Now, that's your opinion. See, back when I was a six-time national champion bodybuilder, I would diet for eight months of the year. I was tremendously focused. I, I gave up so much of my life to become the best. It would be very easy for someone to say, oh, well, you know, yeah, he's in the magazines. I mean, he's making these videos. He's winning these championships. He looks great, but he's miserable. Look at the life that he lives. So much deprivation, so much sacrifice. He doesn't have all these connecting. If someone would have assumed that about me, they would be wrong. I love the process. There's nothing else I would have rather be doing at that time. And that's why I was the best. That's why I got what I wanted. All right, so be careful. If you're not getting what you want and you're choosing not to do certain things, not to think certain ways, all right, don't assume that those people who are getting what they want, that they're miserable, they're not happy, they're doing it wrong. That's your belief. You stick to those beliefs, you'll continue getting what you want. I'm here to make you at least reconsider those to help you get what you want. My only purpose is to help you get what you want, whatever ways I can to help you do that. Now, I'm reminded of, I went to an Anthony Robbins seminar on the Virgin Islands many years ago, and we were talking about what you would do to get what you want in life around your rules, values, beliefs, standards, many of the things that I'm talking to you about because it's so critical to getting what you want, or at least closing that gap between what you expect in your life and what actually happens. And Tony Robbins, he asked the question, would you rip the wings of a, off a butterfly for a million dollars? And at that time, I was so idealistic. And, oh, I was so ready to raise my hand. It was a group of 2,000 people. I just wanted to answer the question. And he happened to call on me. And I stood up proudly to the question, would I tear the wings off a butterfly for $1 million? And I proudly stood up and I said, no, I wouldn't. I don't need to tear the wings off a butterfly to earn $1 million. I'll find another way to earn that million dollar, to earn that million dollars. I was so proud. And you know, there was, there were people around me, obviously with the same way of looking at the world as I did. They said, yeah, that's right. That's right. And Tony Robbins looked at me and he said, interesting. He goes, and I said, yeah, you know, to me, it's either black or white. You know, there's no in between on this one. I would not rip the wings off a butterfly for a million dollars. And he said, interesting, black or white. It shows how you may look at the world. All right. Now, I'll tell you, I've lived a lot of life since that time. That idealistic guy who was all caught up in the process and his idealism and how to get what I wanted. And I thought about that lesson hundreds of times over all those years. And the message, the point that I got out of that. And I'll tell you what, right now, you give me that butterfly, I'll rip its wings off in a flat second for a million dollars. Okay? Again, what do you want? What's the result that you want? And what are your rules, values, and beliefs, and standards that are helping you get there or preventing you from getting there? And you need to examine those. All right? I am not the same man. You give me that butterfly. I know what I want. I'm going to find a way to get it. You know, I'll tell you what is that 
me being so confident in other ways to get the million dollars didn't seem to pan out as easy as just ripping off a butterfly. So it's important. I know you think the way you think. All right. My question is, is it helping you get what you really want? It's time to find ways to help you get what you really want. And it starts here with how to become an alpha male, a powerful leader to help you lead your own life and to lead other people at the same time. An alpha male knows what he wants. The alpha male knows exactly what he really wants, all right? Not what he settles for, not what he kind of thinks may be available. The alpha male knows exactly what he really wants. He knows what he wants. He's taken the time to figure out what that is in his life, the big picture for his life. Now, you do not have to know in every single detail and make it black or white either. I get this or I don't. He just knows which direction he's going in his life. He has the big picture. He's taken the time to figure out the specifics what he wants for his life, what he wants to do, where he wants to live, the things he wants, the emotions he wants to feel, the people he wants to have in his life, how those people act, how they respond, how they treat him in his life. He's taken the time to look at the big picture. He knows what he really wants for his life. And whether or not he ever reaches those heights, at least he knows he's going in a specific direction. Throughout this course, I've talked about you have so many things available to you physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically, and other resources such as the people in your life, your time, your energy, your emotion, your creativity, your imagination. You want all those forces that you have available going toward the direction that you really want. So you need to figure out exactly what it is you really want. For your life, and then you'll use all those resources to make it happen. Whether it takes one month, one year, 10 years, 20 years, at least all of those forces are moving in one direction. The alpha male knows exactly what he really wants for his life. Now, in the next session, we're going to get really clear. We're going to do a dream life workshop where you're going to in great detail, figure out what it is you really want in your life. And for many of you, it could be a really difficult process. It may take practice and exercise, and there's going to be a fun system that may take you three or four or ten tries to get the hang of it, to start thinking big, to start dreaming big, and to start opening your mind up to what you really want. So we're going to do that in our next session. The alpha male knows exactly what he really wants in his relationships. We talked about how important the resource of other people are in your life. And that everything that you really, really want that you don't have right now will come from other people, either directly or indirectly. Relationships, they're massively important. The alpha male knows exactly what he really wants in those relationships. Whether they're friendships, they're romantic relationships, or in business. The alpha male has conditioned himself, all right, whether it's on a conscious level or on a subconscious level, to know exactly what he really wants out of every situation. Now, what do I mean by every situation? He goes to a party, he either consciously or subconsciously thinks about what has to happen during this party to make it a 10, a level 10 experience. I mean, a great experience. He'll define what that means to him and what he has to do to make it happen. He'll use all those forces, those resources that he has available to make it happen. Every situation, a meeting, a phone call with a special friend, his day, his productive day, his weekend, fun. When you know exactly what you really want, the chances are much greater for it to happen. And even if it doesn't happen, you're going to be a lot more productive, a lot more happy, a lot more excited about the whole process. Now, 
Again, if this isn't you, I'm going to sell you on how you have to practice and exercise this skill set. Now, one week of practice on knowing exactly what you want in your life, exactly what you want out of relationships, exactly what you want out of every situation makes you better than you were one week before. Three weeks of practice, three months of practice, three years of practice, you're out of control. You start doing this on a subconscious level. It becomes automatic for you. It doesn't start until, number one, I make you aware of how important it is. And then, number two, you start practicing and exercising this process. You don't do it sometimes. You do it all the time. So it becomes automatic. The alpha male knows exactly what he wants for his life and never makes important decisions in the middle of the process. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, you don't live your life and then say, hey, maybe this is available to me. Hmm, maybe I want some of that. And then later on, hey, maybe this is available to me. All right? You're wasting so much time. You're wasting so many of those forces, those resources by not taking the time to think about what it is you really, really want. Now, I know many of you, you may not have right now the skills to lead your own life. You certainly don't have the skills to lead other people. And it's caused you a lot of pain. And that pain has caused you, whether you realize it or not, to adopt certain habits to shy away from certain situations. Well, I can't do that. So... You put it out of your mind and you don't even realize you're settling for what you think is available to you. All right. It's a skill set. It's something to practice and exercise. You don't make important decisions for what you want in your life right in the middle of it. You don't just show up and hope for the best because guess what? The best doesn't happen by just showing up. Think about what you really want from the most important aspects of your life right now. Just take a time to think about that. Think about what you really want from the most important aspects of your life right now. What are the most important aspects of your life? Is it your relationship? Is it your job or your business career? Is it uh, creating financial security for yourself? Is it your health? Is it your fitness? Okay, what are the most important aspects of your life? Do you want your dream house or your dream car? All right, think about what you really want from these important aspects. And then how will this type of thinking change the quality of your life? Can you see that? When you know what you want, even if it takes a month or a year or a decade, at least you're moving in a particular direction of what you really want. Take the time. To really think about that. The alpha male knows exactly what he wants from every relationship he enters in his life before every relationship begins. He doesn't get into a relationship with, just say, a woman in a romantic relationship. Just kind of show up and say, well, I hope she's nice. I hope she doesn't do this. Or, well, let's just see how she treats me. And I guess I'll decide later. He has certain boundaries. He has a frame to work from that he already knows will please him, and he'll do everything he can. Again, all those resources that are available to him, physical, mental, emotional, psychological, time, energy, money, creativity, imagination, whatever it takes, he is going to use them to make sure that relationship is manufactured. It's established. The frame that I'll talk about later on is set up in a way that helps him get what he really wants. He can't do that. He can't use those resources as if he doesn't know what he wants. For a job or for a business, he takes the time to think about it. This is a skill set that you practice and exercise. Think about what you really want from the most important relationships in your life right now. Do it right now. First of all, what are the most, the most important relationships in your life? What are the most important relationships in your life? And what do you really want from them? How will this type of thinking change the quality of your life? The alpha male knows exactly what he wants in every situation he enters. 
before every situation begins. I use the example of the party. He doesn't just kind of step in, hey, I hope it turns out to be fun. Well, he knows what it is by taking 30 seconds, and he's so conditioned to do this, he's going to meet the woman. He's going to meet other people and act a certain way. He's going to make business connections. He's going to dance if that's what he wants to do. He takes the time to figure it out. He doesn't just show up and see what's available to him. Right? It's a metaphor for your life. Are you showing up in life and just hoping it turns out okay? I talked about the word hope. Don't hope. Make plans. Plan to have a great time by knowing exactly what it is that has to happen for you to have a great time. Think about what you really want from the five most challenging situations that you face in your life right now. All right? How will this type of thinking change the quality of your life? All right? Don't just show... There are certain situations that challenge us all the time. Have you stopped and thought about how you really want it to turn out? And then how can you use those resources to make it turn out that way? Practice and exercise this way of thinking. That's how an alpha male thinks. The alpha male understands that his ability to know exactly what he really wants can be taken to higher and higher levels. Right? This is a skill set that can be sharpened and improved upon no matter what level you're at. So if you say to me, well, Skip, you know, oh yeah, I do that. I know exactly what I want. I'm a take charge kind of guy. I don't want you to be satisfied because there is always a higher level. And I want you to understand there is a higher level to the skill set, your ability to know exactly what you really want. I want you to to learn that now and not later on. And say, well, why didn't I think this early? I could have had this. I want you to take the time to think about that. I can think of certain situations for myself when I had very specific goals when it came to my bodybuilding career. I had it written down. I have it published in my books exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be a national champion. I wanted to set a new standard for drug-free bodybuilding. I wanted to be a leader throughout the world. I wanted to have books and DVDs. I wanted to do I wanted to be my passion, my career. So I can do what I love to do while helping other people. I wanted to be outstanding in what I did. And I find I defined what outstanding meant to me. But when I look back, I said, you know, instead of making a living doing what I love to do, what if I would have got more clear on that? What if I would have taken knowing exactly what I wanted, what I really wanted, to a higher level? And I said, you know what? I want to do all those things. And instead of just making a living doing what I love to do. I want to make massive wealth so I can create better products for other people. I can do this longer. I can get better at it. And I can provide a lifestyle for myself and my family. All right? Not just make a living. What if I would have got more clear? I would have taken it to the higher level that I'm demanding that you always ask yourself to do. And I said, I want to make massive wealth doing it. Then I would have aligned all those resources, physical, mental, emotional, people, time, money, energy, creativity, imagination to make it happen. You can always get more clear. You can always get more clear. Do not become complacent. Practice and exercise this skill set. No matter what level you're at right now, no matter what your life is like right now, no matter where you are, on the food chain, so to speak. The alpha male makes sure that he asks for what he really wants instead of asking for what he thinks he can get. Again, another important distinction. Take the time. Think big. Put yourself in a state of mind of power. What, when is that for you? Is it first thing in the morning? Is that when you feel most powerful? Right after you get out of the shower? Is it right after you get home from the gym or after a long run? There are certain times when you feel more powerful than others. And when you're in that 
powerful state of mind, that's the time to ask yourself what you really want for your life. And set that standard, and you can't go backwards. You can't take it back later. You decided that's what you really want in your most powerful state. That's what you stick to, right? Ask for what you really want and find your time of day. Find your time of day to go through this practice and exercise, to create your dream life, to ask yourself what you really want from, for your life, for your relationships, for different situations that may be coming up in the next day or the next week. Find your time when you are the most powerful because that's the time to ask yourself what you want, what you really want. Goal setting, life planning takes practice and exercise. And you're going to find that out during our next session. I'm going to get you in a state of mind where you're going to start dreaming about your life and what you really want. Now, there is a reason why I just didn't start off this course that way. Because with your way of thinking and your way of doing, all right, and your past experiences, you wouldn't have been in a state of mind to really think big. You wouldn't have had the skill sets. You wouldn't have had your thought process jumbled up in any way. And it would have probably been maybe a higher version of the way you're living life right now. It wouldn't have been where you really want to go when you really feel confident, when you've really made distinctions of what you need to do to start leading your life and leading other people. And all the things that we talked about, whether it's with your body language, whether it's how to be influential and persuasive and how important that is, you now have more skills available to you. So when it's time to start dreaming, to start goal setting, to start life planning, you're going to be in a more empowered state. You're going to be much, you're going to be much more qualified to think of that dream life that you really want. Now, when we do it next during our next session, that's just going to be our start. That's just going to get you in the game. And it's going to be fun in the future because that's going to be like version 1.0. And then as you go about your day, you go about your week, you go about your month, maybe six months or a year, you're going to start seeing the world a lot differently because we started somewhere, we jumped in. And you know, you know what? Instead of living in that house, I want that house or that car. Or instead of being at this percentage of body fat, I think I can do better. I can have more. And you'll upgrade your dream life and your goal setting. So it takes practice and exercise. And remember that you're not going to just come up with some plan and stick there, it's going to change to how your needs change and especially how you start thinking bigger as you gain more confidence. I'll tell you, the powerful leader that you become six months from now, just from passively listening to what I've been outlining in this course, you are going to become more powerful. Now, you, don't, you won't know by comparison because now that I've said these things to you, they're in the back of your mind marinating. It's like you can't unring a bell. Once you've heard it, you've heard it. There are so many things that I've outlined to you during this course that will change your thought process. It'll change your actions. It'll change your lifestyle in ways that you won't recognize because you heard this. Now you practice and exercise all these things. You're going to be taken to higher and higher levels even faster and you will recognize it. All right, so takes practice and exercise, so jump right in and do that. Be decisive when identifying what you really want. Learn how to make decisions quickly by practicing and exercising. Making decisions anytime you can. All right? An alpha male can make decisions. He makes them with power, force, decisiveness, congruent body language, and it doesn't matter what the decision is. If someone asks you, hey, what do you want for dinner? Chicken or steak? Come up with a decision. I want chicken. If someone says, hey, do you want me to turn on the air conditioner? No, I'm fine. M nothing is, oh, well, whatever. Whatever is okay with me. That's fine. Hey, whatever you want to do. Make decisions just for the practice of it. Just to train your brain to be decisive. So when it comes to making decisions for what you really want, decide, jump in. If you may need to make adjustments later, that's fine, but become decisive. An alpha male is decisive. 
practices and exercise, making decisions anytime you can. Even when you're not asked, I think we should do this. That's what a leader does. All right. Now, again, this is for you. This is to help you get everything in life that you really want. All right. So again, I know I've been coaching men just like you for years and I know the thought process. Well, I don't want to butt in. I don't want to be looked on as rude or arrogant or bossy. You know what? This is for you. You're they're not going to think that way. And who cares what they think? You want to make a decision on something. You offer it. All right. The more you do it, the more comfortable you feel, uh, the more poised and elegant you do, the more poised and elegant you become. But it, you have to get into the process. You can't shy away from it. It's the number of victories that you experience, not the higher percentage of victories compared to losses that will get you ahead in life. The more decisions you make, the greater your chances are for more victories. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me ask you a question. If I told you to go for it in life and take chances, take risks, go for it, I have a question for you. And let's be honest here. With your current way of thinking and your current way of doing, do you think it's better to go for it with 10 different things in your life and be successful 8 out of 10 times? Or... Do you think it's a better approach to try a hundred things and get 20 things right? Be successful at 20 of those a hundred. All right. So is it better to try 10 and get eight out of 10? Your percentage of victories is eight out of 10. Is that a better approach than going for a hundred things, trying a hundred things and being successful 20 of those 100 times. Now think about that. And you think about your life and how you go forward. Sure, you might look better. You might feel more successful. Now, how you feel is based on how you allow yourself to feel. Not by, there's no rule book up in the sky that says 80% is good, 50%, 20% is bad. You're the one making up those rules, all right? So is eight better than 20? Oh, no, Skip, but I was more successful. I did, I tried eight, 10 things, and I was successful eight times. That's better than that that other guy. He failed 80 times. Is that necessarily true? Isn't 20 victories better than eight victories? Think about that. The alpha male is concerned with the number of victories because if he tries a hundred times and he gets 20 victories and he tries another hundred times and he gets 20 more, he's racked up 40 victories. Now, how much time would it take for the person who is concerned about his percentage to get 40 victories at that pace? Think about that. The alpha male goes for those victories. He puts ego aside. He doesn't care what people think. He's not worried about looking bad, and see where that analogy fits in your life right now. Are you really going for it? Are you failing enough? Now, it's not that you're going for failure, but how do you look at failure? All right, think about that. The alpha male never depends on the validation or approval of other people to continue going for what he really wants in his life. He doesn't make decisions as to what he wants based on if it's socially acceptable, what his friends think, what his family thinks. He goes for what he wants. He believes in who he is, what he's all about, and it doesn't matter what other people think. The alpha male knows what he wants. Here's the other thing about being a leader. A leader goes out and he makes decisions based on what he feels is right. What happens when you are a leader is that many times people will criticize your decision, right? They sit on the sidelines and they criticize. The alpha male knows that. He's so confident in his abilities because he knows when he's successful, all those people who criticized him will all be patting him on the back. He's the one who needs to make the decisions for his life. He has more than enough confidence that they'll come around to his way of thinking 
when he's successful and he is so confident that he will be successful. The alpha male controls the frame. Now let me define what I mean by the frame. The frame is in any situation, whether it's a relationship, uh, a meeting between two people, any type of contract, any type of arrangement, a frame are the boundaries, uh, the standards, uh, how it works, how it doesn't work, who does what. It's agreements uh, by all the party when it comes to relationship. A frame is just the parameters of how this will and won't work any situation. The alpha male controls the frame of every situation that he's in. He doesn't leave it up to other people. He doesn't just show up and, and hope hope that he gets treated right or that a particular situation it's set up in a manner that works best for, me, for him. He's going to do everything he can to control that frame, to know how it works to influence other people to live within his frame, to persuade those who don't want to live in his frame to live in his frame. But it starts with knowing that he is in control. He takes responsibility for the frame. All right. So in a relationship, a frame is an agreement between people of how the relationship will work. Now, let me make one thing perfectly clear when it comes to a frame. There's no right frame or wrong frame. It's just what everybody agrees upon. All right. People come from all different viewpoints. Many times the person who takes charge, who leads other people, who decides what the frame should be, and all the 90%, all the followers just fall in line. The question is right now is, which one are you? Do you set the frame in the situations that you participate and you experience in your life? Do you set the frames? Do you have anything to do with the frames that are set? Or do you just step into what other people say? Have you really ever thought about it? More importantly than that, I want to ask you, what are you determined to be? The person who controls and sets the frame or someone who follows along, who ad adheres to the frame that's been set? That's the decision that you need to make right now. And I know which decision you're going to make or you wouldn't be spending all this time taking notes right now, reflecting on these stories that I tell you, these statements that I make how they're affecting your life right now in ways that maybe you never considered before and how you're determined to make changes in your life. The alpha male controls the frame of every situation that he's in. The alpha male understands the importance of establishing the frame of every situation that he's in. All right? He seizes it. He doesn't look around and says, okay, he's not doing it. Um, well, is there a frame set? If not, I'm going to do it. No. He comes into it and goes, hey, this is the way I want it to be. He comes in with a plan and he sees the frame. Again, this way of thinking of the alpha male, of the leader, the man who leads his own life and leads other people, it takes practice and exercise. I'm making you aware of it right now on a real concrete level. I'm bringing it from the subconscious. You've known these this is the way it's been going on. I'm taking it from the subconscious and putting it right into your conscious mind. So now you can make decisions because it's a conscious process for you now. He seizes the frame. I remember having a talk with my dentist and we were talking about man formation and alpha male leadership qualities. And he talked about a time where 10 of these very influential, very successful Men, they all got together for a mother, a father-daughter camping trip. And it was, they had to decide when it would be on what particular Saturday. And like I said, there was 10 leaders. Three of them stepped forward and say, we're going to do it on this particular date. They moved on to the next agenda, the next agenda, the next agenda. And then one of uh, the other fathers said, hey, uh, my daughter and I, we can't come to that event. She has prior she has a prior engagement. And then the leaders, the three that took charge, said, well, we pretty much agreed it's going to be on that date. And he said, hey, well, I, we can't be there. Well, they weren't going to change the arrangement that was set up. That was 
whether agreed upon directly or through default by everyone else. Well, needless to say, uh, that father and that daughter only got to go to half of the camping trip, and that father was not very happy. Now, he had every chance to get in there, know which weekends he could be there, couldn't be in the moment that weekend was established at the very beginning of the negotiations, the agreement. He could have had something, could have jumped in and made a stand there before everybody agreed upon it. But he didn't know exactly what he wanted. He didn't seize the frame. So now he has to follow the frame, whether it works for him or not. Think about that story. Where does that apply to your life? So the alpha male seizes the frame. He controls the frame in every relationship that he's in. He doesn't hope that he gets treated in a manner that he likes. First of all, he knows what that is. He knows exactly what he wants in that relationship. And then he knows what has to happen. And he makes sure that it happens. That the frame, that the agreement is what he wants. And when it gets off course, he gets it back into that frame. Right? He controls that frame. And then because he knows what he wants before he enters that relationship again, whether that's with a friend whether that's a romantic relationship, whether that's a business relationship, he jumps in knowing exactly what he wants, ready to seize the frame, to set up the boundaries, to make it perfectly clear what he will accept and what he won't accept. Now, this isn't an aggressive move. This is just through communication. Now, the more you practice and exercise this mindset and this way of taking action, the more elegant the more poised you become with it. So if your rules, values, beliefs, standards think, oh my God, this is so aggressive, this is so obnoxious, people won't like me, that's not necessarily true. When you know what you want, you're going to use those resources to get what you want. It's going to take some practice and exercise if this isn't who you are right now. right? And you're going to become better and better at it. right? But you have to know its importance and you have to start the process. I remember I used to write for the Muscle Magazines in my first articles, I mean... Every article I ever turned in, I thought was the best. I would finish the last word, send it in. I would say, wow, this is awesome. I really outdid myself there. Every article I turned in on a scale from 1 to 10, to me, was a 10 plus. All right, so my first article, my 10th article, my 20th article. Well, after writing for the magazines for quite a few years, I remember I was doing a guest appearance in New Jersey and I was at a particular booth and there was one really appreciative fan, someone who read my writing for many years and we had talked about a lot of different things and he walked away from the booth and after having a great conversation, he turned, turned around and he said to me, hey, and Skip, I just wanted to tell you, your writing has really improved. And I went, what the heck do you mean by that? What do you mean really improved? <laughs> Every one of my articles, in my opinion, was a 10 plus. How can it improve if the first one was a 10 plus? The 50th one and the 100th one is going to be a 10 plus. What do you mean my writing is improved? And I kind of laughed that I had that belief <laughs> that my 100th one, my first one was going to be just as good as my 100th one. Of course, the more I practice and exercise, the more... I do something, the better I'll become. Of course, my writing has improved. That doesn't mean I can't be proud of my first article. It doesn't mean that my first article that I ever wrote for the magazines couldn't touch people's lives and help them become better at what they do. It just means that the more and more I focus on something, the more and more I practice, the more elegant, the more elegant I'll become, the more poised and the, more, the better my presentation will become. But it's important to, that I jump in and start practicing and exercising right away. So remember that when it talks about controlling the frame, and it may seem unnatural to you, understand its importance, jump in, practice and exercise. You're going to be better in three weeks. You're going to be better in three months. You're going to be extremely better in three years, but you have to jump in. You have to get, them, you have to get started in the process. It's important that you seize, you establish that frame before you even enter those relations by knowing what you want. Now, I'm going to tell you in the most basic terms, the highlights 
All right. Again, you know, throughout this program, I can't go through every situation with you on how an alpha male will think or do. I can take the most basic, the foundation principles. And now at the beginning of this course, I talked about being very successful at anything in life usually comes down to fundamentals, usually about 10 fundamentals. And if you hammer those 10 fundamentals and you get great at them and then you get better at them and then you get better at those same 10 fundamentals, your life is going to go to higher and higher levels at whatever, whatever it is that you do. Well, when I talk about these alpha male leadership qualities, it's the same thing. So I'm going to hammer home some of the fundamentals, this way of thinking, get you to try it, get you to feel it, to experience it, and let it become integrated into your own personality. This is how the alpha male gets what he really wants in life. The alpha male is results driven. What I mean by that is he cares about how to get that house. He wants to get that house. All right. He wants X amount of money in his bank account. He wants to drive that car. He wants to have that body. Right. That's what he's focused on first and foremost. And again, don't pass judgments on what's right, what's wrong, what you would do, what you wouldn't do. Don't be so quick to judge because just like with that butterfly, did I, how long did it take me to get that million dollars when I could have just tore the wings off a butterfly? All right. What is that you want? And then go backwards and think about what you would be willing to do to get it. If you get too much caught up in the process, like many beta males do or less dominant males, you'll never get to the results because you're too worried about the process. I don't want you to go through more years of your life and then reconsider your rules, values, and beliefs, how you do the process to get what you want. I don't want you to be frustrated like I was and be so idealistic, so process-driven, what it looks like, what it sounds like, is it socially acceptable? What will my friends think to get what I want and not get what I want for so long until finally I just say, I've had enough. Why don't I work backwards? I want this. How will I get there? How will I use all those physical, mental, emotional, psychological abilities that I have? How will I use the resources of time, energy, money, people, creativity, imagination? All right. Now, I am not telling you to do something illegal, do something wrong to get what you want, to be so results driven, you just squash people, steal, lie, cheat. I am not telling you that. I am asking you to reconsider the process, the rules that you've created. Are they really true? Boy, I look back on before I man made my man formation, the man I used to be, and all those rules that I had, I've, I've shared some with you with a grocery store in Australia, um, other certain events that I share with you. None of those rules were valid in my mind. They're not valid in my mind anymore. And I should have reconsidered those a long time ago. I would have gotten to the lifestyle that I enjoy right now a long time ago. And that's what I'm trying to do for you. So I'm not telling you to do anything wrong, but don't make it black or white. You either do it wrong or right. I'm just asking you, is there a way to get what you want to use those resources and abilities that you have to get what you want in a manner that's different than the way you're going about it right now. Can you think a little bit differently about it to get what you want? When you become results driven and then work backwards on the process, you're going to give yourself a better opportunity to actually achieve those results. The alpha male is results driven. Beta males, less dominant males are process driven. Don't get caught up in the process. And I talk about, you know, my new passion in the morning is to play basketball with the men at the gym. And I'll tell you, I had a good jump shot back in my day. I was my high school MVP. Now it's been years since then. I'm coming back into basketball. I still have that passion. It's coming back. and I'm really enjoying it. But I had the, the jumper with the nice fluid motion and a nice backspin that looked like just like an NBA player. And it was really important for me to have that. But guess what? When I first started playing my shooting percentage was horrible. I may have looked good or I tried to make it look good, but you know, the object of the game was to get the ball in the basket and I was not doing a good job of doing that. 
right? Now, I kept on working on it where I could make it in the basket and still look good, have my form look so great, all right? But the bottom line is when I changed the way I looked at it, and I said, look, you're not in high school anymore. Look, win the game for your team, make baskets, become a results-driven, then work backwards on that nice backspin or you know, that nice form or whatever. But the name of the game are results. The name of the game is to get the ball in the basket. And it took some conditioning because I was process driven. That was ingrained into my personality, my way of thinking and my way of doing for so long. All right. So now I'll throw up a wild shot where it'll hit the backboard and go in. And even though that isn't the way I wanted it and the guys know it, they say, Oh, what a lucky shot. You know what I say to myself now? Yes. I go, yeah, because I am conditioning my brain to say it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. What it matters is the results. It matters that it went the, the ball went through the hoop and we won the game. All right, I'm conditioning myself more and more and more. I'm not taking for granted, oh, I got this aspect of being an alpha male leader down. I'm conditioning myself more and more and more to become results driven because you can always work backwards and improve the process. The alpha male accepts nothing less than the best for himself and his family. This is one that is very important to think about. And I want you to think about the Godfather movie. What they did, whether it's illegal, I'm not, again, I'm not telling you to kill or, you know, bootleg alcohol or sell drugs illegally. I'm not extortion. I'm not saying anything about that. What was interesting to me when I watched that movie, especially back when I watched them, because I didn't watch those mafia movies. Those guys are results driven. And there's something that we can all learn from that, at least in this context of results driven versus process driven. It was wild when I jumped in there because I never watched those movies earlier in my life. I didn't watch them until I was a mature adult. And obviously they had lots of rules, values, beliefs, standards, and what they'll do to provide for themselves and their family, it was much different than mine. The question is, is just like being results driven, they're trying to provide the best for themselves and their family. That's their number one priority. And then they work backwards on the process or what it looks like. This is what I want you to think about. All right. And this may be a tough question if you're settling for a mediocre life. You know, if you're settling for a mediocre life right now and you have it all rationalized in your brain, well, I'm living high and mighty or I'm living the right way. Those people are unhappy or they're this and that. You know what? Don't make those assumptions on other people. The other thing, too, is and especially like if you're religious and, you know, sometimes I'll do my coaching and I'll talk to religious people and they'll talk about how what's right and what's wrong in God's eyes, so to speak, and how they're settling for a life with without the greatest things, without all the options that I've talked about throughout this course. And I'll say to them, it's a quote from uh, Zig Ziglar, is that God created the diamonds for his bunch. Meaning that if you're setting for a life of things that you really don't want, you know, is there a way to have everything, the best car, uh, the best house, the best vacations, not only for you, but for your family? Are you rationalizing your inability to get those things, to find a way to make it happen? Maybe there are things during this course that are shaking that thought process that you're going to find a way instead of settling. All right, because my point is, is that a lot of times we will let ourselves down before we let other people down. And this may be a tough thing for you to look at, but if you have rationalized where you don't have the finer things in life or all those things that you really want because you're, quote, right, you're doing it the right way, you're living a holier life or more socially acceptable life. It doesn't have all the things that you really want, but it's more socially acceptive. It's, it's more righteous, right? You may be letting yourself down and you may be okay with that, but think about your family. If you don't have a family right now, the family that you want in the future, your wife, the woman that you love, your children that you really love, is this mindset that you're holding on to 
so tightly that feel so right to you right now. Are you cutting them off from the finer things in life? To live in a great neighborhood, to have reliable transportation, to have the comfort and security that more money brings? How about the best education at private schools or, or even college? Think about what holding on to your current beliefs may be costing. I want you to think bigger. The alpha male accepts nothing less than the best for himself and his family. He's going to find a way to get it. Results driven, the best for himself, the best for his family, and he's going to work backwards from there. And they will be within his own rules, values, beliefs, and standards. The alpha male has a well-planned, predetermined standards or boundaries as to what he will and what he will not accept in his life. And, you know, we all have standards. I talked about that. You know, what neighborhood you'll live in, how much money you'll have in your bank account, what your body will look like, Right? Have you planned those out or do they just happen? Were they predetermined or did you just show up? You got the results and then you justified why it's okay. It's acceptable. Really think about that. Now, Alpha male has his standards, his boundaries, just like you do. His are well planned. They're predetermined. He didn't just show up. He just, just, he just didn't fall into those standards and then say, Oh, okay, these are okay. All right, so think about that. I want the best for you. I want you to have everything you want in your life. The alpha male has no trouble putting himself in challenging situations where failure is not an option because he expects the best results to happen. He isn't afraid to step up. He isn't afraid to fail. He isn't afraid to look bad. He isn't afraid to put his physical, mental, emotional, and psychological abilities to the test. And he constantly does that in his life, and he builds this muscle, this emotional muscle, to handle challenging situations. How much practice do you have in your life right now, the way you go about, when your back's up against the wall, when you have to come through? Think about the last year, all right? You know what happens. You know what happens when you do that. You use all those resources, you get creative, you get people involved, you use your money. All those forces I talked about are aligned for the outcome that you want. When you put yourself in a position that you have to come through and then you surprise yourself and you're happy with yourself, you're proud of yourself. You may have worried, you may have felt a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. And even if you didn't reach your ultimate goal, you more than likely showed yourself that you did way more than you thought you were capable of. And it was because you put yourself in that challenging situation where uh, failure was not an option. All right, so think about the last year. How many situations did you put yourself in that were like that? That really demanded the most out of yourself. Once, twice, 10 times, Well, let me ask you a question. The man who has put himself in that position 10 times last year versus the one that kind of avoids it, kind of skirts around and has done it one time, who's going to have more muscle, more strength, more power to not only handle those situations when they come up and come through, but is willing to even step into more? Obviously, the one who jumps in and has 10 of them. That's what you need to do, gentlemen. That's what you need to do. You need to build that muscle by putting yourself in situations that demands everything that you're capable of. That's what an alpha male does. The alpha male operates well with tight deadlines, high expectations, and when his back is against the wall. And how does he do that? Through all the things we talked about, that leadership quality, leading himself, leading other people, that body language, faking it till he makes it, that mindset. All those things that we've talked about, all that skill set of a powerful alpha male, and then practicing the exercise, putting putting himself in that situation, often he becomes better and better at it. You don't want to avoid that. You want to run towards it. You want to hurry up and get your 10 out of the way. You want 10 a year, 20 a year, times three years, times five years, times 10 years. Just think of the powerful alpha male leader you're going to become 10 years from now with that type of practice in those situations. 
You know, the next 10 years are going to come and go. How many of those situations where you had to come through with everything you got inside of you are you going to have on your belt in 10 years? You're going to have 100, 200, 1, 2, or 3? The alpha male has many under his belt. He learns how to operate in those situations. He doesn't run from them. All right. Now, here's the other thing. And I've, I've talked about the, what stress is. Stress is when you expect a lot out of your life and there's a big gap between what actually happens. The bigger that gap between what you expect and what actually happens, the more stress you're going to have in your life. All right. I've got a question for you. If you're not willing to step up like I'm talking about, quit complaining, lower expectations. Instead of feeling stress, oh, I wish my life would be better. I hope my life would be better. You know, lower your expectations and get what you can. Just be happy with it. You're not willing to do the work that you know you need to do. And especially after listening to this course, you know you need to do this stuff. Step up to the challenge. Those years are going to come and go whether you do something about your life or not. It's time to start taking action and doing things. The alpha male is a risk taker. Now you've heard that expression, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. It's so true. You know, I heard that saying many times, many times when I went to motivational seminars for so many years and all the self-help books. But when I found out the term risk is so relative. Now, to one person, it's risky to park in a handicapped parking spot at 11 o'clock at night because you might get a ticket, a $250 ticket or whatever it is. That might be a huge risk, and they might say, hey, look at me, I'm risky. To another person, <laughs> that's nothing. I just mortgaged my whole house on this new business, this little startup company. You know, really, those are both risk. If someone's tolerance to risk or that they're going to park in a handicap zone, okay, and I'm not advocating that, you know, whatever your rules, values, beliefs, or standards, just take it for demonstration purposes. If that's really risky, oh, you parked in a handicap parking zone so you can get closer to the store at 11 o'clock at night, well, how many cops are really going to be there? And even if you did get a ticket, so what, $250? That's a risk to you? Versus the guy who risks his whole house on some business, some dream. All right, they're both risk. Now, it depends on what you think risks are. So here's what I have to say about risk. Instead of just saying to you, the alpha male is a risk taker. Because you might say to yourself, well, I take risk. I take risk. You know? The question is, if you're not getting what you really want, and you're really working hard, you really feel you're using your talent, you may not be taking enough risk. You need to evaluate that too. You know, I quit my stable job at the grocery store as a young man to go for my dream, to take a risk, to become an international bodybuilder, leader, eventually a, a seminar speaker, motivational speaker. I left the security. I took a risk. But if I really think about it, even after that, there was some risk that I wouldn't take with my time and my energy. I remember my I was under contract with a supplement company. And what they said was, Skip, don't say generic meal replacement during your articles in the magazine or on your website or when you're speaking in front of a group. You say our product right here. And to me, I said, oh my God, well, you know what? I only have a year contract or there's only six months left on my contract. If I were to say that, I'm kind of selling myself out. I'm putting out there in print for everyone to hear forever and ever and ever. And then what if my contract doesn't get renewed? It's kind of, I'm giving them free advertising. I'm associated with them. All right. And they can stop paying me. And also it could ruin my reputation for the next company because they'll associate me as the old company. They'll see it in print. And I have actually references that align with that way of thinking. The point is, is that later on, I just said, you know what? What do I have to lose? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. And guess what? I've been on contract ever since. Nothing even written down. Just a handshake, just a, an agreement. And I just do that. I took the risk eventually. All right? I should have never gotten that situation. That, that would have been taking a risk. 
Okay, it's a risk that I eventually took. My point is that even if you think you are a risk taker, all right, are you taking as many risks as that you need to to get the job done? Now, remember something. When you take a risk, they call it risk for a reason. You could fail, all right? You should never take any risk that you're not prepared to totally lose, to totally fail. Just remember, the alpha male is a risk taker, okay? The alpha male is a leader. Now, the alpha male is a leader. Here's the point. Whether you want to consider him natural or self-taught, he is a leader. He leads his own life. He leads other people. Now, let's just talk about a natural leader or a self-taught leader. Is there one better than the other? Well, first of all, I don't necessarily believe that someone is born a leader. I do believe they may have had good role models or maybe they felt pain or a certain situation changed the direction of their life young in their life and they had lots of practice and exercise, meaning maybe they're in the fourth grade and they were playing marbles with their guys and they said, you know, let's change the game and let's do it this way. And all the kids just fell in line. They said, wow, that was easy. All these little boys around me are doing exactly what I asked them to do. That's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. And then maybe he tried it again at the next recess and they did what he said. And he caught on from a very early age instinctively on a subconscious level. He became unconsciously competent that if he says something in a certain way, he has the congruent body language. He says it with enough authority. He doesn't even have to be telling the truth that people are going to follow his lead. And then he had, ever since the fourth grade, all this practice and exercise of doing it for years. So the question is, uh, he wasn't born that way. He either had role models or he fell into it and he practiced and exercised for many years. And so now he's your age or he's in your group or he's in your business. He just seems like a natural leader. Actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he was a natural leader, he learned it in the fourth grade and you haven't learned it or he was self-taught, it, it really doesn't matter. The question is you, right? One distinction, one strategy can change the total direction of your life. One distinction, one strategy in this course can massively change the direction of your life. So if you're 32 years old right now and you think that you should have had this stuff down, it's too late for you, it's not, right? Learn the skills, teach the skills, change the direction of your life doesn't matter. It's never too late to become a leader. Remember that. It's never too late to lead your, lead your own life. It's never too late to lead other people. And it's never too late to enjoy all the options that are going to come with that leadership. The alpha male easily and readily takes a strong stance on the issues he believes in without any concern of how he will be viewed by others. When you want to be a leader, you have to believe in who you are and what you're all about. If you don't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be in advance, you have to put yourself in a state of mind. Become that Hollywood actor that, you know what? I'm going to go out there and it doesn't matter what other people think because if they don't immediately believe me, if they don't immediately follow my lead, they'll find out in the long run that I am indeed right, and they'll eventually come to my side. You need to get yourself in that state of mind. You need to become that spin doctor to look at the situations in your life where you lead your own life and you aren't concerned with the way other people think. Now, again, that's so easy to say. That's nothing that you haven't heard before. You can't care about what people think. One way to look at it is that people really don't care about your life. They care about themselves. All right? They're really not... Sitting back and evaluating, they don't say, okay, well, Skip wants to do this with his life, and he's taking this direction. Well, let me get a piece of paper. Let me do some internet research. Let me get a calculator and see if it's the right move for him. They don't put any thought into it. Okay, agree with you, disagree with you. They're just looking at their own life. They're not a valuable source <laughs> to worry about their opinion. They shouldn't be involved in your decision making. Only you know about your life. You have to make those decisions. Look, they don't have a crystal ball to know the future, and neither do you. Who is going to take control of your life? Who's going to lead your life? Who better than you? There's no one. You have to have that belief. 
You have to have the belief in you. You can't put too much importance in the thoughts and opinions of other people. They're not that vested. They're not that interested. And even if it's like your parents, oh, don't open that business. It's really risky. You know, they're just trying to protect you from pain. Well, the pain to you might be not opening the business. And although you appreciate your parents' concern or those loved ones' concern, they don't have the same emotional investment. You have to learn to disregard the thoughts and opinions of other people when you're deleting your own life. The alpha male always demonstrates stability. He always demonstrates stability even during unstable times, even if he has to pretend. The alpha male is a leader. We talked about influence. Influence means that I just show up and because of the way I walk, talk, the way I go about my life, people say, wow, something about that guy, I like him. I want to drive his car. I want to live in his neighborhood. I want to work out the way he does. What kind of workout program does he use? Hey, those, those pants are cool. Where does he get those pants? What's the name of those pants? That's influence. When you just show up being who you are and what you're all about and people notice and they want to be like you, that's being influential. Persuasive is when maybe someone doesn't totally agree and you convince them to your way of thinking or doing. All right? You are influential if you want to take the role as a leader. How you respond to situations or how you don't respond. Your emotional state, especially during the toughest time. You have to be ready that you are the leader. leader. You are the leader. You are the trendsetter. You set the tone of the emotion that's in the group of people you're in. During unstable times, you got to be stable. You got to be rock solid. You can't be on some emotional roller coaster. An alpha male is stable even during unstable times. And again, if you have to pretend, you pretend. You know that's your role. You know that's important for you to do. You know that's what an alpha male leader does. That's what you need to do. You need to practice and exercise that. Okay, when you're in a situation and everybody's freaking out around you, hey, what's gonna, what, how's this all going to turn out? Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your family. All right, nobody has a crystal ball. You don't know what's going to happen in the future, and neither do they. All right, this is the time to just be certain and stable and confident and be influential so that energy gets passed along to them. And you say, you know what? Everything's going to turn out okay. You're the rock, you're the force, you're the leader. And guess what? Most times, everything does turn out okay. Or everything turns out a, a version of okay that maybe isn't as bad as what everybody feared. And guess what? Even if it does turn out horribly, who cares? You made them feel comfortable and safe for that extra hour or that extra week or whatever. Okay? No one's going to say, hey, well, something bad happened. You said everything was going to be okay. It's not your fault that things didn't turn out okay. All right? There is no downside for stepping up and being a strong emotional force by saying everything is going to turn out just fine with congruent body language, with congruent voice qualities, facial expressions. You are the leader. You are a person of influence. The alpha male always demonstrates stability even when times are unstable even if he has to pretend. The alpha male always finds a way to differentiate himself from the rest of the crowd. You know, the alpha male knows he doesn't want to be like anybody else. He always finds a way to be different, to be better, to look at himself differently, that he especially comes with that attitude. So if everybody kind of wears clothes this way, he has this own special way. There's some way that he differentiates himself. He doesn't try to be like other people. He doesn't really try so hard to be so different either. But he just notices that there's something different about him. And he plays that up. He believes that. He walks that. He's special. He's not just dust in the wind. He's not just like everybody else. And he spins his reality because he differentiates himself. The alpha male lives in his own frame or reality and refuses to live in anyone else's. That frame, that reality, how the world should work, how it shouldn't work. He makes the decisions for his life and the people around him, how he wants it to be. You know, other people come in, they want to whack it up. He's so strong in his frame. He's so strong in his belief of the reality. He's unstoppable. He's unshakable. 
The alpha male assumes that everyone thinks he's awesome. What a great assumptive quality to have. That everybody thinks you're awesome. It's like when you practice and exercise all the qualities and characteristics that I talk about, you're going to gain momentum. You're going to have references of times in your life where you came through. You're going to look for the best in your life and your situation. Why wouldn't anyone think you're awesome? You know, I had an experience where I was going to be meeting with some people and they were a little apprehensive of meeting me. And my attitude was, well, what are they going through? I mean, what's what's the situation there? Is that I was 100% certain that when they got over the reservation for meeting me, they would love me. They would think I'm awesome. And guess what? That's what happened. They did. To me, of course they were going to. They just need to give their chance to just see how awesome I am. The alpha male assumes that everyone thinks he's awesome. And that type of belief in yourself comes out in the body language and actions. You need to spin your world, your situation, your events, your references from the past, whether you need to write it down. These are all my victories. These are all the times that I've come through. These are all the great qualities that I have. Whether you look at them all the time, focus on those awesome things about you. Do whatever it takes. If you need to read that every morning and every night, train your brain to see how awesome you are instead of getting in the pattern of always picking yourself apart. The alpha male proudly displays confidence to the world. He is not, he doesn't hold back. He doesn't play humble. He doesn't play himself down. He's confident. He knows that's a powerfully influential quality to have. He plays it up. It's a great thing to be confident, right? Whatever your rules, values, beliefs, whatever you heard from that confident guy back in the sixth grade that all the kids said he was cocky and arrogant, forget about all that. You're a big boy now. You're not trying to fit into the pack anymore back in grade school. Confidence is a very attractive quality. You can't see it any other way. That's the only way to see it. The alpha male takes control of his environment. And what is what do I mean by that? He doesn't just come into a restaurant and sit anywhere they tell him to sit. Especially if there's a great table by the window that he wants to sit at. He's at least going to ask, hey, I'd like to sit at that table. All right, if it's too cold, he doesn't sit there and freeze in the restaurant. I'll say, hey, can you turn down that air conditioner? You know, of course, if the meal isn't right or he has a dirty glass or he asks for what he wants. I remember one time I was playing pool and uh, this pool hall and there was this one chair that was always in the way. And I, again, it's always about thinking outside your box. It's about con- taking co- control of your environment. And this is a powerful lesson to me. Because you know what I said? You know what? Why don't they just move this chair out of the way? It's not stuck to the ground and have a clear shot. And then I thought about where else is that in my life? <laughs> what are all these fixtures, permanent fixtures that I'm making permanent in my mind that aren't really that way? That I can take control over my environment and live the life that I want or at least ask for the situation? Am I living in the world as it's set up? Or do I control the the environment? Do I move people here? Do I rearrange stuff that fits me best when who cares? Or is it a metaphor for life that you just live the way life has dished out? Or do you make life conform to you, especially when it's available? Do you put yourself in a cage? Or do you take yourself out of the cage? The alpha male takes control of his environment. So let's talk about how the alpha male influences and persuades others. Now, we went through this in great detail in our last session. The alpha male understands that everything that he really wants in his life that he doesn't have right now will come from other people, either directly or indirectly. And he understands that he must become influential, persuasive, and charismatic. And during our last session, we talked about all the ways to become more influential, persuasive, and charismatic. And the key is, to becoming influential, persuasive, and charismatic is interacting with other people to get them to willingly, joyfully, and enthusiastically help you get what you really want in your life. Okay, not by tricking them, not by deceiving them, just getting them to want to. The alpha male understands that confidence is the most influential, persuasive, and charismatic quality that a person can have. That's why he doesn't play down his level of confidence. That's why he looks for all these references in his life 
that can make him feel confident in any moment. Think about all the times in your life. Think about those times when you were on fire. I mean, you just walked the world, seemed to respond to you differently. You were in that confident state of mind. What put you there? What were you focusing on in your life at that particular time? And maybe it was 10 minutes later, maybe it was 10 hours later. Remember those times where you didn't feel confident and your body language was congruent with a person who doesn't have confidence? What were you thinking about at that time? Right? Confidence. You must be confident in yourself, whatever it takes for you to get there. That's how you become influential, persuasive, and charismatic. It starts in your own head. We have to find reasons to get you into that place that you're on fire. But you have to understand to get what you want in life, you have to appear confident. Let's just say it's great if you are confident. And when you're not confident, you learn how to appear confident. Because that's how other people who are so important in the process of getting everything you want to lead other people starts with that confidence. You have to remember that. That's where playing yourself down, being humble, and then wanting them to treat you like you are confident, it doesn't work. You take charge. You lead your life. You create your reality, your frame. You don't act a certain way and, and hope other people, you know, that it's acceptable to them. The alpha male understands that being highly assumptive is extremely influential, persuasive, and charismatic quality that a person can have. Just assume the best in every situation. Assume people will like you. Assume that, assume that you'll win. Assume that you're going to have a great workout. Assume that you're going to have a great day. Assume that the way you communicate will be greatly appreciated by the person you're talking to. Learn how to be highly assumptive. That's a great quality to have. Throw away all the rules, values, and belief that that's cocky, that's arrogant. Oh, wow, look at him. He just expects the best out of every situation. No, that's a great thing. Change the rules, values, and belief that keep you in that 90% that are struggling, that are the followers, and come to the world of leaders who assume the best in every situation. The alpha male never seeks validation or approval from other people, never, because he's so confident. He does all these things that we're talking about throughout this course. He is so confident in the direction that he wants to go, in his own rules, values, belief that they're all aligning to where he wants to go. He uses all his abilities and resources to go in that direction. He doesn't need other people's validation. Now, he certainly doesn't ask for it. Hey, what do you think about this? You know, he may want to get somebody involved in the process to make them think that they're involved in the process, and that's a, a small exception. But he, he doesn't need to ask other people what they think about what he's wearing or what he's doing or what his plans are because, like I said, people aren't invested in the process. They don't know all the different circumstances that have come into your decision. You don't need the validation of other people to live your life. A leader does not need that. He's just going to lead his life and just assume other people are going to fall in line. So it's easy to say, okay, I'm not going to ask for the approval of other people. But you also want to make sure you don't do it in nonverbal ways with your body language. Like you do something and kind of look over your eyes. I wonder how they're observing me. It's the same thing. People know what you're doing. You're getting their social approval. When you walk ahead of the group, don't look behind you and think, are, are people following me? You don't need other people's approval to go on, along with your life. Train yourself. Condition yourself not to need that type of approval from other people. Certainly don't ask. Certainly don't give the body language that you're looking for. The alpha male subtly trains or conditions other people to seek his validation. Well, how does he do that? You know, you can do that in so many different ways. When someone says that, you say, oh, can you say that again? Or, hey, that's a really good point. When they didn't ask you for the point that you made. Always be very inactive. Always be approving of them. And before you know it, you can train people to think about you and what you're thinking of them, to seek your validation. That's how you become influential when people wonder what you're thinking. They ask your advice. Right? You've got to jump into the process. Know that that's what you want. You want other people to seek your validation. That's when you know this leadership stuff is working. The alpha male never qualifies himself to other people. He doesn't, he doesn't care what other people think since even more beyond not caring. He just doesn't think about that in the process. So it's not like he's going to say, well, you know, hey, I'm going to 
just want to let you know I'm going to do this or do that, and just in case you don't like it or this or that. He doesn't have to qualify what he does. He just does it. He just says it. He doesn't need anybody's approval before he does anything. The alpha male never prefaces any points he wants to make with qualifying or softening statements. It's kind of like what I said is that. Now, I don't want you to get upset, but this is the way I think about this. No, he just says, this is what I think about this. He doesn't worry about what they're going to think before he says it. He just says it. So no qualifying statements. Now, everyone normally has their own default, as I call it, qualifying statements. Now, this may sound crazy, but whatever it is for you, think about where you might do that and eliminate it immediately. Just say what you want to say. The alpha male subtly trains or conditions other people to qualify themselves to him. It comes back to, for needing validation and to make sure uh, that they get your agreement. And you can do that with so many different ways. When they tell a joke and where everybody just goes, blah, 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 they just start laughing whether or not they got the joke or not. You might just do a little bit of pause and then laugh, all right? When they ask you a question, take your time to answer the question, to really think about it. Before you know it, you start conditioning people once they say something or do something to look for you because you're always the one who's making the final judgment. You stick out in the crowd. Back in the bodybuilding world when there would be judging and there would be certain poses like a front double bicep, it's always one person's strategy to kind of linger along and while all the other competitors on stage hit the bicep, then he'll wait till everybody else is done and then boom, he'll hit his to stand aside. Okay, so when you're in groups and people, they are, are doing things and it's just a natural tendency to look around for approval, you want to be the one that sticks out and train people to want to qualify themselves to you, to get your approval, make sure they're doing it right just for you. That's how you become a person of influence. The alpha male can always walk away from any relationship he is in, whether it's friendship or romantic or business, at any time and go on with his life just fine or at least give the impression that he can. So important, the person who can walk away from any relationship, whether it's a, a deal on a car, whether it's uh, a business relationship between uh, two people, uh, it's a friendship, Okay, it's a training partner. The person who needs the relationship least will become the most influential in that relationship. And you just need to know that. It, it's just kind of this approval system that's built in to most people. And if it's built into you, it's something that you need to be aware of and then condition yourself to work out of. All right, if... if if you can walk away from a relationship with other people, they're going to naturally go, well, hey, well, what's wrong with me? Now, they may say, hey, well, go ahead, but you're the one walking away. It's just naturally how it works. Nobody, Everybody wants connection to some degree. Some need it more than others. right? If you're the person who can walk away from the deal, people will work harder to get your approval. And it's just something to always remember that if you want it too badly and maybe you've been in relationships and you weren't treated the way you want it to because you wanted it more than they did, all right? It may be the fact, if you really did a psychoanalysis, maybe you do want it more. But when you show that vulnerability, you show that you want it, you give up your power. And the alpha male knows this. He creates situations for himself where he can walk away. He can he can walk away from a car deal or some business deal and have the confidence that he can get a better deal. If he can't get the frame that he wants, then he's not going to have any frame and he'll be just fine without it. And even when he's not sure, he's got to present that body language because it sends out that sense, that essence, okay, that scent that he's in control and that's when he gets respected. All right, so the person who can walk away from any relationship will be the most influential in that group. The alpha male communicates his powerful message in the most effective and efficient use of the spoken word. What I mean by that is the fewer words he needs to use, the better. All right? Learn to speak less, not more, and still get your point across. Some less dominant, some beta males, 
They'll over explain things over and over again. They'll repeat the same points over and over and over again. And that just shows that lack of confidence, that lack of leadership. If you find yourself doing that, just shut up all right, and start again. Just say what you need to say. Use the least amount of words to get your point across. Now, that's going to take practice and exercise. So be prepared to practice and exercise doing that. The alpha male makes no apologies for what he says or does because someone else gets offended. All right, if you believe in what you do and what you're all about and you have confidence in what you're doing, you really believe that it's the right thing just because someone else is offended doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. That's just from their rules, values, beliefs, and standards. So remember that the thoughts and opinions of other people are not a good judge if you are right or wrong, right? So don't make apologies. You know, consider what you're doing. Consider it from your point of view, though, too. Remember that everybody comes from different worlds, and just because someone gets offended doesn't necessarily mean that you owe them an apology. That's when you're tight in your frame. And I'm not talking about being stubborn. I'm not talking about being insensitive. Many times you as a leader, leading your own life, leading other people, you stand strong in your frame and your beliefs. They'll come around and say, well, you know what? I was a little offended at first, but now I get your meaning. And how many times in your life has that happened to other people? All right, Maybe you with another person. You got their meaning later on, even though you were originally offended. Right? There are many less dominant beta males who, oh God, conflict. Someone got upset. I must be doing something wrong. No, stand strong in your frame until you can properly evaluate it. That is not an indicator that you've done something wrong. The alpha male understands that he must openly and clearly ask other people to help him get what he wants in life and is influential enough to get them to willingly, joyfully, and enthusiastically help him get what he wants. You must ask. You can't sit back and hope. You can't just think that if you're just a great guy, everybody's going to give you everything you want. How has that worked for you so far? Ask. Learn how to ask. It may feel awkward at first. Okay, how is the other person supposed to know what you want? You know, the better and better you get asked, maybe, oh, that's not what, the way I was raised, Skip. Ever since a little boy, I said, don't ask. Let people offer. Or whatever it is, however. You know what? You're not a little boy anymore. You're a man. And are you dissatisfied with life? Do you want more? Well, now it's time to use that valuable resource of other people. Let them know what it is you want and learn how to ask. If you're not good at asking, practice and exercise and you'll become better at it. You'll become more elegant in your approach. You'll be more poised. You'll be more smooth, more influential in doing it. You have to get in the process. Just like the writing of those articles that I talked about. If I didn't jump in, if I just waited until the whole world accepted my approach... I would have never got to my 100th article. So don't worry about if this asking stuff seems a little unnatural or you feel a little awkward. Get in the process and you'll become better and better at it with that practice and exercise. The alpha male openly and clearly asks for special advantages that most other people, that other 90% of the followers, assume they will not get or are too afraid to ask. In your man formation, as you step up to become a leader, I want you to look for opportunities to just ask. Just ask for certain situations. If you're renting a car, hey, what would it take for me to get a free upgrade to a little bit bigger model? A lot of times you have the person they're working for minimal salary. They'll, if they have extra cars in the back, they'll give you that free upgrade. When you're checking into a hotel, hey, ask for the free upgrade to the better hotel. Okay, ask for the advantages. When you're uh, dealing with certain appliances and there's some wiggle room, just is that the best deal I can get? Just a simple question. All they can say is no. The alpha male expects the best. He expects the best treatment. He assumes he's going to get better treatment than anyone else. He's going to get better deals. Learn how to act until it becomes reality. Be highly assumptive. Ask for those special advantages. Look for them. See, that may take some practice and exercise for you. If you know by your own admission that you've been a sheep and you've been just towing the line, doing what you're supposed to be doing the whole time, you may not even know about upgrades on rental cars or upgrades in the room. You just assume that everybody just gets whatever they pay for. All right? So it may take 
a little bit of open-mindedness, a little bit of uh, discovery, a learning process to figure what else is available out there. But I want you to keep that in mind and ask for a special advantage. Ask for the best table. Ask for any deal you can and just do it for the practice and exercise. The Alpha Male does that. You do that. All they can say is no. The Alpha Male welcomes the opportunity to spend time with those men who are higher up on the food chain. Right? Do what you can to hang out with alpha males who are stronger, more powerful than you. It's got to be a win-win situation. If a, if a man is a powerful alpha male, he doesn't want to hang out with any losers. And you know he may not want to take on a charity case. So you got to stand tall, proud, and be one of him. And there has to be some reason. You find a way to differentiate yourself. You find a way that you could be valuable in his life. Get the opportunity to learn how the big dogs think, walk, talk, act, and hang out with them. There is a way, if you're determined, that is valuable in your man formation. That is a valuable step in you becoming a more powerful alpha male. The alpha male takes 100% responsibility for the quality of the people he has chosen in his life. If he's hanging around losers, guess whose fault it is? That guy he's looking in the mirror. Good people, bad people, everybody in between. The alpha male takes 100% responsibility for those people in his life. You need to do the same thing. You're not stuck. This is a, you're probably in a free country listening to this course right now. And you can make the choice of the people in your life, so take 100% responsibility. Now let's talk about specific situations. The alpha male in social situations. Now, here's some examples. This may not be you right now. This is when I want you to step up and become that Hollywood actor and play the role as an alpha male because I want you to feel it. I want you to do it, even though this is something unnatural, something that you wouldn't do in a million years. I want you to start doing that because I want you to feel what a leader does. I want you to feel what an alpha male does. And I'm going to give you specific examples of what to do because I want you to, like I said, feel it on a gut level, experience all the sights and sounds and reactions from other people and say, wow. I like this leadership stuff. And when you feel it on more than a, a theory basis or intellectualizing what it would be like, then you'll know, hey, I want more of this. So let's talk about the alpha male is always the first person to extend his hand and a handshake when he meets other people. Don't wait for people to come up to you. Look for the opportunity. I'm telling you this, like I said, you can't unring a bell. Once you've heard the bell ring, you've heard it. Now you've heard this. Now it is your job. It's your mission. If you are committed to become more of an alpha male, more of a leader, you will be the first one to extend your hand. You're looking for that opportunity before you even approach the other people, before you ever get in that group. You're the man. You are the leader who extends your hand first. The alpha male will often show his higher status, his leadership, by grabbing the upper arm, of the person he's shaking their hand with his other hand, his non-shaking hand. It's just a, puts his, you know, on his hand a little connection there, shows strong confidence and that you're a leader. When walking to a certain place like a doorway and getting there at the same time as the other person, the alpha male will just confidently just assume that he'll go first. And usually the other person will yield, I would say 99% of the time. The question is, are you the person who yield? No, you go. Uh, you go. You could do that little tap dance. Just assume you're going first. Take charge, lead. Don't get in the old dance routine. Hey, who could be the most beta here? Someone's got to go first. They don't care. Practice and exercise that skill, that mindset for you. Because like many of these things, they may seem small, but it's the way you train yourself how to think and how you train other people to treat you and how you walk up to a doorway and what you do. Do you do a little tap dance or do you just confidently walk through and they follow? It's just an example of how you live other areas of your life. Practice and exercise that skill set. Now, when you get to that doorway and you want to be a gentleman, okay, you'll direct them. No, you go first. Okay, instead of doing the tap dance, you already know you're directing the traffic. You say, okay, you go first. You might even, if you feel comfortable, kind of just guide them, put your hand on them and, and lead them through the doorway. When you're at dinner, whether it's at lunch or in a formal uh, dinner gathering with a group, the natural place for the leader 
is to be at the head of the table. Now, you know your friends. You know the group you're in. Someone's got to sit there. Why not you? You know that going in there. Your natural place as a leader is at the head of the table. Now, if you're in a group and, and there is a definite top dog of the group, it's the president of the company, someone definitely, you know, you have to pay your respect. There's usually two heads of the table. Take the other one. That's your place as a leader. The alpha male takes responsibility of the check at the end of the dinner out at a restaurant. All right, and we've all been in those situ situations where the check's in the middle of the table and just sits there. And everybody, the groups, the couples, they're all just sitting all nervously. Well, who's going to pick up that check and start dividing it out? I don't want to be the one. I don't want to be the one. You, as the alpha male, it never sits there. You grab it. You take control of it. That's just your job as a leader. And where you show up in one area of your life, you're going to show up in all areas of your life. You're the one who takes care of the check, takes the pressure off everybody else, makes them feel better, makes them feel comfortable. They can be at ease. You're in charge. That's part of your practice. That's part of your exercise. That's part of you stepping up. Now, I'll tell you what. If you're a real alpha male and you know when the end of the dinner comes along and you're going to be person who picks up the check I want to see how influential and persuasive you really are and I want you to find a way that the waiter or the waitress just gives it to you directly there is a way when you meet the table oh your name is Chuck hey Chuck so glad that you can serve us you've been doing a great job tonight with eye contact showing that you're in charge showing that the leader now you got to remember waiters and waitresses through all their experience, they're looking for the alpha male. They're looking for the leader. They're looking for the person to hand the check to. They know how uncomfortable it is to just sit in the middle. They've seen that tap dance. They come by the table and no one's picked it up 10 minutes later. Okay, that's what their job is. They've seen that situation a million times. You go out to dinner, what, once a month? They see this many times an evening. All right? This is what I want you to do with this challenge. I want you to... Take it as an insult if the waiter or waitress doesn't give you the check at the end of the restaurant. How's that for a challenge? Now you're going to have to use everything we've talked about in this course to be influential, persuasive, to carry yourself in a certain way, your body language, your facial expressions, how you schmooze, how you talk, how you build that answer and pour with the waiter and waitress because you know, because it's your goal that you are the leader and he's going to hand that check to you so you don't even have to pick it up all right and let me just tell you something when you do that for other people when you take that responsibility out of their hands they don't have to worry about it that's how you establish yourself as a leader all right you make other people around you feel uncomfortable when you're out to eat the alpha male has impeccable table manners that he was either taught as a child or you took the time to go find out as an adult Right? We've all been in those situations. Oh, is it this fork? Is that fork? Is, it, is that person doing something wrong? Is that good table etiquette? Take the time. Go get a book. Go search the internet. Top 10 table manner tips. All right? And keep it with you. Keep it at your desk. Uh, if you go to work-related events, keep it at your home so you can review. So you can sit there with certainty and confidence because you know the proper table manners. Just part of you being a leader and feeling comfortable. The alpha male will introduce the people he does know to the people, the people he, to, okay. In group settings, the alpha male will take the initiative to introduce himself to people he doesn't know. Instead of waiting for them to introduce themselves to him or avoiding the situation altogether. How many times in your past have you been in a situation where you're at a dinner, at a party, and you're standing three feet away from someone, they didn't introduce themselves to you, and you didn't introduce yourselves to them? You're a leader. You make other people feel comfortable. You take initiative. You introduce yourself to other people. You don't let those situations develop. And at the same time, in those same group setting, if you know one group who doesn't know another group, You'll bridge that gap. You'll introduce them to each other. Again, the alpha male is a leader. He brings people together. He makes other people feel comfortable. The alpha male has a special way 
uh, making other people feel good about themselves. And he understands that people will like him. He'll become that influential leader if they like themselves and their presence. So all these things that you're doing will help people feel more comfortable around you. And that's how you become influential. The alpha male remembers names, specific things about people, smiles, gives warm eye contact. And most importantly, he makes other people feel good about themselves a priority. Now, this is something that I've touched upon throughout this course. I'm going to talk briefly about, and it's how the alpha male views conflict and confrontation. The alpha male understands that conflict and confrontation in this competitive world are bound to happen from time to time. He doesn't try to avoid them. He knows that people have their different ways of looking at the world. If he spends so much time avoiding conflict and confrontation, then he's not getting what he really wants because he's not that lucky. If he wants what he wants, other people are going to want it. There's going to be some conflict and confrontation. You need to become confident in those situations. You need to be confident in your abilities to handle them. You need to be poised and elegant in your approach. How are you going to get that? Through practice and exercise. So who is going to be better at handling conflict and confrontation? Who is going to be better at preventing conflict and confrontation? Someone who has been through 25 conflicts and confrontation to some degree or another over the last year, or the person who's only had one or two because their beliefs had them believing that avoiding conflict and confrontation was a good thing. All right. If you've been spending your time avoiding conflict and confrontation and not working on getting better at dealing with it, my belief is that you are not even coming close to getting what you want because you need to learn how to deal with it. You need to learn how to get around that. You need to learn how to become influential and persuasive. Persuasive means getting other people to your point of view, no matter if it starts at a conflict. You can't surround yourself with people who just agree with your point of view and just hope uh, that they're going to go along with your life plan. It doesn't work out that way. You're sacrificing, you're compromising your life plan by avoiding that confrontation. It's just the competitive nature of other people to get what they want. It's your job to be persuasive over that. So you don't want to shy away. Conflict, confrontation is an important part of the negotiation process between two people. And when you get in those conflicts and confrontation as an alpha male, you just understand that's just the way that it works. You don't need to, to talk about the situation over and over again af afterwards. You don't need to talk badly about the other person who you got in the confrontation with. You just move on, learn from it. And the alpha male never gets involved in any type of gossip, whether it's the direct result of conflict and confrontation. He doesn't have time for that. He's leading the mood, the emotion of the group. He doesn't need to focus in on what other people are doing. In fact, it's not that the alpha male doesn't get involved in gossip because most of the time he doesn't even realize what's going on. He doesn't put any stock in all that. And if you're a man of influence, of power, of persuasion, you know, there's going to be the 90% because only 10% of us are leader. Or only 10% of us are leaders. The 90% are going to the ones who are going to be gossiping about us. All right, so the alpha male puts no value in gossip. There's no place for that in his life. If you find yourself wanting to gossip or actually gossiping, you're doing something wrong. Focus on where you need to go, making everything happen in your life the way you really want it. There's no time for gossip. The alpha male strives for a higher level at all times in everything he's doing. Now, there, I've said many times throughout this course about how you have to never become satisfied. It's always want more. Always realize that there's a higher level to everything that you do. And the alpha male knows that. He does that with everything, with his fitness, with his business, with his relationships. He's always shooting for that higher level. If you find yourself, well, everything's all great, you may not be pushing yourself hard enough. You're not using all those physical, mental, emotional, and psychological abilities. You're not using all those resources like your time, people, your energy, imagination, creativity, all going in a particular direction. 
if you get that satisfied. Now, there is a balance. You don't want to create too much angst, but realize that certain pressure is what drives you. The alpha male surrounds himself with successful people. He realizes that he is the average of the people he hangs around. So the higher quality people he hangs around, the higher his average goes up. You know what they say, birds of a feather flock together. If you find yourself hanging around a lot of losers and you think that you're doing yourself some favor, you're not. I know a lot of people who like to hang around people who are so less than them because it takes the pressure off of them. Many times in their life, they're not getting everything they want. They don't know how to get it. And so if they can put their energies into other people who are struggling, they have the belief that they're doing something of great value to the world. And really what it is is taking the pressure off themselves. You want to surround yourself by the most successful people that you can. Now, the alpha male during all these situations, this isn't some big, gigantic ego match. You don't always have to be the top dog in every situation. You know, if you're a younger guy and you're hanging around older people, you know, you might be ha hanging around some really established people, some really established men. You have to know your place in the pecking order. Now, that does not mean that you let go of everything that you've learned throughout this course. You remain a dominant man with dominant mindset, dominant body language, facial expressions, eye movements, voice qualities, and actions. You stay powerful. You stay alpha. But you don't have to be the top dog, so you don't need to get into all that. The alpha male is extremely passionate about at least one area of his life and loves to share that passion with others. Everyone loves passion. Everyone who loves something. There has got to be one thing in that life that you're extremely passionate about. And you find an audience. You want that electricity. The alpha male has that electricity to some area of his life and that passion. Even if the person isn't necessarily interested in that particular area, that passion is infectious. Every alpha male that you know has that one area of passion and he's willing to share it with other people. The alpha male has worked hard to become an expert in at least one area of his life. There's one area that he focused on, he worked on developing and finding all the distinctions and the strategies more than other people. That expert, being an expert, being the best at what you do, knowing more than other people in this particular area, especially if it's of value to other people, is an extremely attractive, a charismatic quality that the alpha male possesses. What is it for you? What are you an expert in what area of your life? And how can you play that up? How can you learn more? How can you dive more in the process knowing it's such an alpha leader quality and characteristic? How can you bump that up and promote that even more knowing that it's so influential and persuasive? And if you don't have an area of expertise, what is it for you? What can it be? I heard someone say that if you were to read five books on a particular subject, you're going to know more than most people. You'll become that expert. Think about that. Someone took the time to write about a particular subject in a book, and they went through all that process of thinking about it, writing about it. I mean, the material that I'm talking to you about right now, all right? I mean, for years I've studied this, I've thought about it, I've observed things, I've written it down. Well, think about a person who, who does that in a particular area with a book. And you find five people who've done that. They all have their different view of the same thing. You read all five books. How long will that, even with your busy schedule, how long would that take you? Three months? Well, just think of all the distinctions in that one particular area from those five authors, those five books, that the vast majority of the population doesn't know. You're going to become an ex instant expert investing in five books and expect in investing those three months worth of time. You need to be an expert in at least one area of your life. If you want to be that leader, if you want to be that powerful alpha male, what is it for you? And what if you already have one, what can you do to enhance it? Whether he owns a company or an employee, the alpha male sees what he does for a living as a mission. It's just who he is, what he's doing. He believes in what he does so much. It's that essence. It's that spark they have in their eyes. They're spending 40, 50 hours a week. It's their mission. And as you work your way to become a powerful alpha male to lead your life in the direction, that's something that you need to do. If you're not working for a company that you can believe in, 
takes up so much of your time. You need to think about making your plan to be with a company that can be your mission to take up so much part of your life. Alpha male, what he does is his mission. So find that and make it yours. The alpha male doesn't look at rejection the way other people does do. The alpha male does not interpret what other people call rejection as he sees it as a positive experience. Whereas other people find a way to avoid it next time, the alpha male looks at any type of rejection in any area of his life as a way to learn, to grow, to find a way not to do something. All right, You can learn so much from defeat, from rejection, a better approach, a better plan to be, become more prepared. And that's how the alpha male interprets what other people call rejection as a positive experience. The alpha male uses any pain that he experiences in his life as a motivating force to push him forward and not hold him back. Throughout this course, I've shared so many stories of pain. I didn't say, hey, well, I've had my life totally perfect and you should have a perfect life like me too. I talk about my pain. And by talking about it and telling you the message that I learned from those painful experiences in my life, they've not only empowered me, but now I'm using them to empower you. You got to look at these painful situations. How can you spin it? We talked about being a spin doctor. How can you spin those situations in your life to empower you? That's what an alpha male does. Now we talked about all this confidence. We talked about all this swagger, all this energy that you're going to be beaming out to the world. You're going to be 100% M-A-N man. And you got to be okay with that. All right. Cause that's what you're becoming. The alpha male makes no excuses for being 100% M-A-N man. All right? That's who you proudly are. Do whatever it takes to have that belief. You're working hard to become this leader, to the, become this alpha male. You can't have incongruent body language like you're ashamed of or if you're doing something wrong. You're, you know, it, by that time when you're carrying that, you're not looking for the validation. You don't care whatever the people think anyway. So remember that. Don't tone it down. Where you show up in one area of your life, you're going to show up in all areas of your life. When you're in the gym, when you're in the grocery store, when you're amongst your girlfriend or wife, you don't make any excuses for being 100% M-A-N man. And don't worry about what people think. Again, they're not invested in your life. And just because someone says they don't like something doesn't mean they really don't. And besides, who cares? Again, you live in your own reality. You set your own frames with your relationship. And you're so influential and persuasive. You're so confident about who you are and what you're all about. Other people will buy in. It may take them three days or three weeks or three months. But they're going to buy in. They're going to like your swagger. They're going to like your confidence. They're going to like you being 100% M-A-N man. The alpha male doesn't tone down what he believes is how he should conduct himself as a man because of the thoughts and opinions of other people. All right, doesn't matter what other people think, they'll get, he'll get them to buy into his reality. The alpha male understands that his sexual energy is the most powerful force that drives him as a man. Now, Napoleon Hill talked about this in his book, Think and Grow Rich. There's a whole chapter about that driving force that has led men to great accomplishments. All right, it's a bottled up energy and it's a bottled up force. You know, now in this society, I was talking to uh, a teacher who was studying the behavior of boys and how they just don't think the same as little girls, yet the school system nowadays is making them wrong for acting that way, which is like a genetic, a brain function, and getting them to act like little girls. And if they don't, they're considered doing something wrong. All right? You know, the thing about it is, is that there's a certain energy that may not be accepted, but whether you are participating or not, it's driving you. And the greatest leaders, I, I really urge you to get the book, Think and Grow Rich. He talks about the characteristics of the most successful men, the most powerful men. And that sexual energy, that force, that swagger is a force that they used for them. And you can learn a lot more about that. But you don't have to play it down to be politically correct. The alpha male is passionate about what he does, but he's not over, overly emotional. 
emotions, those ups and downs and all arounds. That's what women do. That's what beta males do, less dominant males do. Be as passionate about every issue, but you're always in control. You're not overly emotional. The alpha male never takes actions based on his feelings. Oh, I feel I should do this. It's, you know, we talked about emotions and how we're driven by emotion, but feelings, you know how they go up and down. If you had a cheeseburger, get some good carbs in your system, your feelings and moods change. You don't make those decisions based on feelings. You make them on logic that you can make during that situation. Feelings, that's what, how women make decisions. They never take actions. Uh, the alpha male never takes actions based on his feelings because he realizes feelings can change. The alpha male takes 100% responsibility for a success or failure. The alpha male takes 100% responsibility for his success and for his failure. He realizes all these abilities, physical, mental, emotional, psychological, and all these resources that are available to him, his time, his money, people, creativity, imagination, those are available to him, whether he aligns them up properly, whether he maximizes them or not. That's the reason why he is or isn't getting the way that he wants. There is a way. He believes that there is a way. So when he fails, he takes a 100% responsibility for it. Very important point. The alpha male understands that the more stress he can willingly, joyfully, and enthusiastically take on in his life, the more productive he will become. If you're avoiding stress, if you're avoiding being backed up the wall where you have to use all of your abilities, and you think you're doing yourself a favor by avoiding that stress, you're not going to get the most out of your life. You're not. It isn't about creating a life with less stress. It's about creating a man who can handle stress effectively. So remember that you need to become better at handling stress and challenging situations, not avoid them. Get into the game. The alpha male expects the best outcome in every situation. That's something that he just conditions himself to think. And when you practice and exercise the, the qualities, characteristics, and actions that I've outlined in this program, how can you not expect the best? When you start getting re references of success, references of leadership, Reference of you successfully influencing the thoughts and opinions of other people. When they start living in your frame, how can you not expect the best in outcome from every situation? The alpha male says yes as often as possible when he's offered anything by other people. Where you show up in one area of your life, you show up in all areas of your life. You have to let people give you stuff. All right, When they offer you a drink and you really don't want one, you know, just get used to saying yes. Someone offers to open the door for you or get that for you. Again, it may seem like a little thing, but you need other people to help you maximize your ability to get what you want. Get used to saying yes. It may sound little. It may sound, it may sound small, but you want to get into that habit. The alpha male never utters the words, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Right? You'll hear some big, cocky, arrogant people. Now, during our conversation during this course, I talk about you, well, you can't care what other people think. You never want to verbally tell that to anybody. By you saying, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Well, it's on your conscience. You're just showing that you do care what everybody else thinks. You never want to even say those words. Keep them to yourself. At the same time, you never want to tell anybody that you're an alpha male, you're a leader, you're so charismatic. You just do it. You don't tell people that. They see it with your body language, with the way you act, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you take action, the way you assume the best. The alpha male, if the alpha male thinks it, he must do it. All of these strategies, all these qualities and characteristics and action that I've shared with you throughout this course, I've passionately shared with you. I know I've sold you. You know this stuff is right. I've broken past those old rules, values, and beliefs that you've had. And you said, you know what? I am so tired of not getting what I want. He's right. I need to give this a shot. You've heard these things. Now you're going to be faced with this on a doorway. When the check comes at the table, when it's time to make decisions, when you want to say something and you know you shouldn't have a qualifying statement, when you do something and you instinctively want to ask for, well, what do you think? Or even look at them. 
Now that I've told you these things, it's like that bell. Once it's been rung, you can't unring it. Once you've heard it, you've heard it. You've heard these things. You know what to do now. You can't ignore it. I've already sold you on it. So later on, when you get in a difficult situation, you know what an alpha male does? You know what a leader does? No, that isn't the time to go, oh, well, you know what? I guess I don't agree with that. You do agree with me. If you think it, you must do it. You have to build that muscle. If you think it, you must do it. You know what the right thing is. You know what you've been avoiding. Even if you haven't been avoiding, maybe you haven't been aware of some of these things. Now you are aware. If you think it, you must do it. You build that muscle to step up to the challenges. And in three weeks and in three months, it becomes easier and easier to be that kind of leader that you really want. The great thing about it, when you become that leader, you live, you live life with more passion, more direction. You get those options in life that you really want. The alpha male proudly takes on the identity of an alpha male. He is an alpha male 24-7, 365. A person's identity is the strongest and most influential force he has. You are an alpha male. You are a leader. You lead your own life. You lead other people. That's your identity. And that's the way you're going to carry yourself with every fiber of your body. You're going to take these strategies. You're going to practice and exercise. You're going to be patient with your practice and exercise. Give yourself the time knowing that just this thought process alone is taking your life in a direction that you're going to be so proud of. Your life is never going to be the same again. And that's just by taking the time to listen to this course. When you practice and exercise everything that I've shared with you, during this course. When you think it and you challenge yourself to always do it and you give yourself those three days, those three weeks, those three months and those three years, you will become that powerful alpha male. 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 That powerful alpha male.